We want to talk with you about the books that feed your imagination and the vices that spark your soul. We drink, we curse, we read things. Come sit by us. Expect no judgment, just good times. Welcome to Paper and Vices. Books reviewed, vices indulged. This is your mature content warning. I am Victoria Papers. And I am Lee Vices. And to answer your question before we started recording, um, I am drinking a beer that's been in our fridge for a long ass time, but it's not skunky, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> it is ginger beard spiced stout. Hmm. Holy shit, it's good. Oh, it's got it's a gingerbread got... man on it. Yeah, yeah, it's good times. I got it at Trader Joe's this spring, so like it's not from last Christmas. They still had it. Weird. I was gonna say the spring, like gingerbread man. But... Yeah, um, I'm just I'm in the mood. It's yeah. uh, it's the end of August. Fuck this noise. <laughs> Publix actually started, well, Publix, for those of you in other parts of the country, Publix is our local grocery store, and they have really good subs, and uh, they rolled nice. out with uh, their autumn time beers, so. Oh, I know where I'm going tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I got some, I, like, I didn't realize that Yingling had, like, an Oktoberfest. Mm-hmm. So can we just talk yeah. about how like I understand it's basic white girl stuff. My husband and I are both pretty picky, but damn, if Sam Adams Oktoberfest is not a solid beverage it every is. year, it is. Yeah. Although I do still like the pumpkin head ale. Same. Yeah, it's pretty good. I haven't had Sam Adams in a very long time. I need to get on. I didn't that. get any pumpkin head last year. I got. I got a lot of Rogue Dead Guy and drank through that, and my husband and I drank through, like, two cases of Oktoberfest, which for us is a lot, even though it was from, like, September through early January. Yeah. We don't drink that much, so. It was a special time of the, (laughs) of of history. I was like, I didn't either, and then I was like, oh yeah, because I was sipping on them Capri Suns. (laughs) I went through more rum in 2020 than I did in the previous 10 years at home like i went through like four bottles of crack in last year yeah it was a time it was a time we tell the great grandkids stories about being at home during the corona um we still had to have wires in our house for the internets we'll (laughs) leave out the day drinking it's fine (laughs) Oh, man. Um, so I, despite having it in my refrigerator, am not drinking beer. I um have, there's a, a couple, couple months ago, like beginning of the summer, I went up, we go to St. Augustine because they have kick-ass fireworks and they have a distillery up there. I got um an old-fashioned mix. And so one of my favorite beverages is an old-fashioned. So nice. they had like... Like, and I've attempted to make it at home and failed miserably several times. And so, like, I got an old-fashioned mix from them. So I have made myself an old-fashioned tonight. Yeah, it's it's all right. It's a little sweet. Like, their, um, their whiskey is a little sweet, too. Like... Oh. Yeah. Like, it's it's not bad, but it's not one of... Like, it's one of those whiskeys that I would have in the cabinet for, like, when I really wanted something sweet. Like, it doesn't have quite the oakiness that a lot of whiskeys and bourbons that I usually, like, gravitate towards. Yeah. So... I tend to gravitate towards sweeter hard liquors than you. Like, I don't drink whiskey or bourbon. I drink rum. Yeah. Dark rum. Spicy rum. Yes. Which, with, that's been, you know, molasses or sugar. Whatever the fuck they put in it to make it a little bit sweeter. <laughs> I will yo-ho, yo-ho that shit up. <laughs> such a great expression (laughs) yes what are your advices this week um you know what i have to say that now that school is kind of like on the like we're we're getting in the swing of things which took a little bit here because for whatever reason even though my like my kids are like in the same county 
because they're going to different schools and one of them's private, like my daughter started a week later than my son. So it's just been this whole, like, instead of just like a one week adjustment, like process, it's just been this like rolling, like ongoing thing. But so now that everybody's finally like in school and going, like I have really just enjoyed taking time to like read for fun, which I mean, we read for fun anyway. I mean, this is what we do, but just having the extra time, like even if it's just like 10 minutes a day, I'm just the like, no guilt time, the no guilt. Here's 10, 15 minutes extra to read my book that I did not have. So anyway, a no brainer vice, because this is what we do. We read books. That is my vice for this week. It's a good vice. I think, I don't know. I only have the one kid. I will only ever have the one kid. And I was homeschooled the whole way through. So like going to school was not a thing I did. I was under my mother's constant direct supervision until I was a teenager and got a job. It's this weird guilt thing to just be like, I have quiet time at home. Mm -hmm. Do whatever the fuck I want. Which is cool. And like my husband is very wise and is like, hey, you need to pick one of your hobbies that you haven't done in like six years and start doing it again. Yay. <laughs> and I have been doing that. I have been quilting of all things, which is awesome. But it's it's good that she likes school so much because then I don't have to I don't feel as bad. It's just kind of like, all right, quiet house. AC's running. I can do shit. This is nice. Yes. And it it's it's weird because I am learning and it's so different from where I was mentally and mental health wise and fiscally and physically. I'm in a different state before I had my kid. I'm learning how to be like my own individual human again. Mm. So um, cool. It is cool, but it's it's oddly intimidating. And I think part of it is because I haven't really not worked since I was 15. Even when I was unemployed, I did side jobs. I did temp gigs. The only long stretch I had of unemployment in adulthood, I was actually massively depressed. And that was well over a decade ago at this point. And so it's like she's been my job constantly for six years. And like not having that and just being able to have time and money to be like, I'm going to go to the fabric store on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, I'm going to sit on my ass and sew for three hours. It's great, but it's, um, it's a whole new thing to wrap my brain around, but I'm, I'm loving it. It's, yeah. it's good. Yeah. I'm sure it feels kind of like surreal almost like, oh my God, what is this we're doing? <laughs> uh, I believe the word privilege is <laughs> how it feels. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, I understand that it's a privilege and it's a privilege that not everyone has to be able to not have to go get a job every second their kid is in school. Mm -hmm. Me feeling guilty about the fact that that's not my situation every waking moment doesn't make it better for those people. True. I think awareness of my own privilege and just looking at people who do juggle a job and multiple kids and somehow figure out how to put dinner on the table before 9 p.m. Just being like, wow, mad respect. I don't honestly think I could do that. I think you can appreciate your time alone and massively respect people who are in different situations and acknowledge their hard work at the same time. Mm -hmm. For sure. So that's where kind of I'm learning to sit. And all my day drinking habits have stopped because if something happens at school, I have to be the one to get her. No, it's good. Actually, on her first day of school, my husband took me out to a very ni nice breakfast and was like, you're having cocktails. And I was like, yes, yes, I am. Yes. That was a so. good chat day. Like, we have a chat and I got pictures of her beverage. <laughs> yeah. My actual advisor this week um, is uh, Halloween decor. It's all out now. <laughs> I may have some boxes arriving. <laughs> My husband knows. He's just like <laughs> William Sonoma and Pottery Barn and Crate and Barrel and Target's online shit started putting out their Halloween stuff. And he's like, 
yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, yay. Yeah. But I mean, this that's dangerous. Your, that's your big holiday. I've started collecting stuff for people's great pumpkin presents. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mother in law is getting a really good one this year. We make Halloween cards. Christmas yes. is like hit or miss, depending on what we want to do. Uh, but yeah, Halloween's our big thing. So, and last year. Last year was just so weird and so nebulous in so many ways. And, like, we didn't decorate until the first week of October, which for us is incredibly late. That is pretty late. (laughs) And so, like, I already had the hand towels, the Halloween rug for the bathroom washed, ready to go. (laughs) I am... I am on top of shit this year. Yes. So it's Um, exciting. Make up for last year. Absolutely. August is a perfectly respectable time to start like Halloween. It is. And I'm hoping that like the weather, I keep saying like, it's because I'm almost through this beer. (laughs) I'm hoping the weather will get its ass in gear and say, oh, you know what we should have? A fucking autumn. That'd be great. That would be great. I haven't had an autumn in a long time, so, you know. I will this year, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're coming and enjoying mine, and I'm all about it. Yes. So I'm hoping for, like, some some nice low 50-degree mornings in mm. October because we're going to be up in the mountains with some fog and, you know, just standing on the porch drinking the coffee. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> No, I don't want to go to Ibiza. I want to go to the mountains in the fall. Why do you ask? <laughs> I would like to do both, actually. Ibiza was... sounds exhausting. You would do both. Yes, I, I You're would do adventurous, both. Though. I was supposed to do Ibiza for my fortieth birthday, so like this was the plan. Oh yeah, you I was. Were. I was gonna go to Amsterdam, smoke a shit ton of weed, and then I was gonna fly over to. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> No, no, a shit ton is a unit of measurement that's perfectly acceptable. (laughs) I'm watching Victoria almost spit out her beer. It was awesome. (laughs) Um, uh, And then I was going to go to Ibiza and we were going to make reservations. So here's one of my bucket list items. There is a restaurant in Ibiza called Sublimotion. And I have not actually looked to see if they're open anymore because of like COVID and stuff. Hopefully they survived, but it's one of the most expensive restaurants in the world. It's a lifetime kind of like, she's type. she's looking it up. Um, I am. It's a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Like, and oh, it's, it's this... in the Hard Rock Hotel. Holy Is it shit. really? Yeah. I didn't realize it was in the Hard Rock. Huh. Interesting. I don't know. But like, I just thought it was a standalone restaurant. It shows you how invested I am in it, but I want to go. It's like this... It's not just dinner. Like, you get, like, the um, virtual reality goggles and, like, the table and the walls all change. Yeah, it's an experience. Yes. So this was supposed to be my 40th birthday, and then I got pregnant, and then COVID happened. So I was like, okay, maybe not for my 40th, but there's always, you know, my 41st or 45th or something. I don't know. Yeah. I will make it happen. That's really cool. Yeah, I may. I would probably consider going to Ibiza for forty eight hours for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you sh- you know what? For my forty fifth birthday, we should start planning now. We've got five years. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, we should, and that'll be the year I turn forty. That's perfect. That's so, perfect. <laughs> yeah, no, it'll be the year I turn forty one. Sorry. Okay. I'm because we're off by a year. My bad. Anyway, you know what? It works. We'll it we'll works. figure it out. I'll lie. That's fine. <laughs> I'm over 21, so as long as I lie about my age not being under 21 now, I'm fine. Yeah, it's all good. (laughs) Yeah, this is like a whole thing, and then also they feed you. They do. Holy shit. Yeah, it's a big deal. (laughs) That's a naked lady. So, (laughs) sorry, she has strategically placed gold triangle (laughs) chainmail. Which is Um, what you wear in Ibiza, to be fair. (laughs) Fair. Fair. I'm going to need a lot of links if that's the uniform. (sighs) But this year we're going to the mountains and being boring, middle-class, basic white ladies. Everybody pack your leggings. (laughs) Yes. And I'm I'm so down for it. Yes. 
I would like to go and be cozy and boring. This is great. Yes. It is. Sign me the fuck up. What are you reading this week? I started reading Star Daughter. So I'm about halfway through that. So I'll, I'll give you my opinion on that next week. So and the reason I'm mentioning that is because I fucking love it. It's amazing. But I did finish This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria, and I got it in a book box a couple months ago, and it just kind of sat on my TBR list for a very long time, and I was just like, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And then finally I was like, all right, I need another one of the five books I'm reading at the time. Like I finished, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to pull this one out. It was super cool. It has automatons and pirates which I thought is such a, like, it's such a weird mix. Like, it's, you wouldn't picture, like... That's very steampunky. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was really... Which is, you know, I'm down. Yeah. Super cool. So, like, they're fighting, like, you know, technology, and there's an evil dude that, you know, does bad shit, and they're, like, on a pirate ship, and it's really cool. So... That's awesome. Yeah. I did get to, like, towards the end, I was, like... You know how you get to this the point in, like, certain stories where you're like, I don't want to stop reading this, and it is very good, but I'm just kind of done? Yeah. So that's where I was kind of, by, like, the last, about three quarters of the way through, I was just like, I'm going to finish this. I want to see how it ends, even though it's somewhat predictable, but I'm enjoying it, and I feel like I've committed this much time to it, I'm going to finish it, but I'm kind of, I'm ready to move on. So I don't know... If there is a sequel, I might read it, depending on how much time I give give it. But um, Do you find that there's like a book sweet spot for you? Or does it just entirely depend on the author and genre and yada yada? It totally depends on the author and the genre. So I don't know if it was just... Like, I've read steampunk novels before and been totally enthralled with it. Like I, I, Bone I, Shaker was amazing. I haven't read that one yet. I need to. Who is that one by? Cherie Priest. Okay. Yeah. that's It sounds familiar to me, but I have not read it. But, the Wind um, Up Girl was also really good. Really sad. I cried, but it was good. That sounds like just the Wind Up Girl. Just the title sounds yeah. kind of sad. So, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I you used the word enthralled, and I think that's it. Like, it was a very good... Hmm, it's kind of like a movie you watch for like the background that you really, really enjoy, but it's not necessarily like your favorite. Makes sense. Yeah. So anyway, what about you? Um, I just got done. I try to do this thing, unless it's an author that's established that I know I'm going to like their stuff. Because everything is a series these days. Where I don't start a series if there's only one book in it so far, if it's Ooh. a new author. And I made that mistake, but it was a really good book. Sarah K.L. Wilson is the author, and it's called Fly with the Arrow, a Bluebeard-inspired fantasy. Ooh. Like Bluebeard yeah. is in, like, the pirate? Um, Bluebeard is in, like, the poem? No, I'm thinking of Blackbeard. Ha! <laughs> That's the old-fashioned talking. <laughs> Oh, here it is. Fly with the arrow, dance with the sword, give your heart to the borrow, die with your lord. There was once a man who had fine houses both in town and the country, a deal of silver and gold plate, embroidered furniture and couches gilded all over with gold. But this man was so unlucky as to have a blue beard, which made him so frightfully ugly that all the women and girls ran away from him. Charles Perrault, blue beard. 1697, as translated by Andrew Lang in the Blue Fairy book, 1889. Wow. So it's based on that. Um, and it's going to be a four-part series. The first one is Fly with the Arrow. The second one is Dance with the Sword. So the third will be Give Your Heart to the Borrow. And the fourth will be Die with Your Lord. It's very... Alice and Wonderland meets kind of this weird quirky humor but it's not so mad that you can't make sense of anything or follow the story so there's this girl her family are very very minor nobles and they're invited to party or some shit at court and it's her first time at court and she's chosen to wear this little bell so that if bluebeard shows up to steal a bride 
as he's been known to do uh, every couple decades, um, he'll take her instead of the princess, which is kind of bullshit. Wow. But he's he's taken 15 wives so far in their history. He ends up taking her and she becomes his 16th bride. And you find out the reason he goes through brides is because he the magic makes it to where he owns all of their days, basically, and he uses them as magical currency. And there's this game with a war that's going to affect the mortal countries and... She fights against him, but then she starts to work with him. And there's this riddle between them where she cannot speak to him during the day and he cannot speak to her during the night or vice versa. And if she breaks that rule, it will be very, very bad for the mortal lands. But she starts to fall for him and work with him and finds her way around that. The first bride who ever did right before shit happens at the end. And she ends up back in the mortal land. She's rescued by her brothers. Uh, but there's there's a twist with that. And um, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. It's incredibly well written. It's mm-hmm. very rich without giving so much detail that you get bogged down in it. And she's very, the main character is very practical and very reasonable and she's just basically thrown down the rabbit hole and it's it's very charming i'm very much looking forward to the next one which is not coming out until september 17th at which point i will be very much looking forward to the (laughs) next one um i will probably end up eventually buying these in paperback and having them on my shelf um if the next three are as good as the first one i was very pleased it's a very fairy tale Yeah. But in a... Not in a way that you know what's going to happen. Like, if you read a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, you know what's going to happen. Yes. There will be new elements. It can be interesting. There can be subplots. But ultimately, you know what's going to happen. And with this, because it's just based on such a non-concrete poem bit of old storytelling, there's no ending we're definitely heading in so yeah yeah. and it's technically ya it's it's for 16 to 18 years so i expect it'll be pretty clean if that's your thing and uh yeah i'm i'm really liking it i did not expect to like it it's in kindle unlimited and i actually had it on my kindle unlimited for like a month And then it was all those books by independent authors that i read regularly that came out over the summer and I had a night where I was going to bed and I didn't have anything to read. So I cracked it open and then um, I couldn't put it down for the next two days. Wow. So, yeah. Really cool find. I love those those stories that you're like, eh, this isn't going to be exciting. And then you're like, oh, well, fuck, you know, pleasantly surprised. Fuck, this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So I will probably read some of her other stuff at some point to Sarah K. L. Wilson. And it's Sarah with an H on the end. Just just incredibly well written. It's one of those books where you're like, oh, you've honed your craft. You are good with the words. I appreciate this. Yes. So, yeah. Very cool. I think that's about it for us for this week. I think so. Follow us on the social medias. Give yes. us a rating wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you have something you would like us to read or advice you think we should try, please, please tell us. You can email us at lee at paperandvices.com, victoria at paperandvices.com. We're on the internet at Paper and Vices on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Our Instagram's pretty nice. I like Mm it. Yeah, no TikTok. But other than that... We're, we're on all the main social media platforms at Paper and Vices, and we would really love to hear from you and have a two-sided conversation. Indeed. In the meantime, don't be an asshole. Smoke a joint and take care of yourself. This has been a production of Paper and Vices, copyright 2021. This episode is presented for entertainment purposes only, and any advice should be pursued only within the legal boundaries, common sense, and personal responsibility of each person. Please check your local laws. 
The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the individual hosts and guests only and do not in any way represent the views of Paper and Vices LLC or any named persons, nor should they be considered personal, medical, or legal advice. Previous episodes and other commentary can be found at paperandvices.com.